Uh, howdy, my name is Chase Newcomb, and I am the director of esports here at St. Ambrose University in Davenport, Iowa. It's funny, I got involved in gaming uh, from a young age, uh, like most people that are currently our age. But interestingly enough, I grew up in a really disenfranchised environment and I did not play online gaming until I was 16, 17 years old. So a vast majority of my upbringing was single player games. And then when I got into college, I started the esports uh, club at Ball State University. And that's how I got into esports. Yeah, so growing up, I, I had no clue that esports was to the great degree that it was. I always imagined it as being the super prestige thing that was always out of reach and happening internationally, not really in the American market. Um, but as I was growing up, it was changing. It was rapidly evolving and growing at an unprecedented rate. So growing up, I always saw esports as this super high up thing that's unachievable. There's no way I'm ever gonna make it there. The only ways that you're gonna get involved in gaming in the American market is either uh, having art for the games and, and making the art or coding the games. And esports really opened my mind to that when I uh, went to college. Oh, very much. It was actually right before college. Uh, the game that actually got me super involved in esports was Smite. Before that, I played Call of Duty, um, and I, I was your average Call of Duty gamer. The only difference is I played single player Call of Duty. Yeah, so I didn't know actually growing up that Call of Duty, when I first started playing, was as popular as it was. And I started with Modern Warfare 1. So right around the time, a couple months after Modern Warfare 2 had released, a, a bunch of friends at school were talking about it, how they were playing online, and it kind of blew up from there. But uh, what what got me initially started was we were staying with a friend of the family because uh, we were homeless for a couple of years when I was in high school and they had been playing Smite on PC and they were playing World of Warcraft and Smite and I asked what it was they told me and I watched for a couple of weeks and eventually they said you know we have some spare parts lying around let's just make another PC so you can play with us and I played for a bit and uh I eventually, actually, I have the poster on my wall. March 28th through 30th in 2014, I went to the Smite launch tournament in Atlanta, Georgia, and I went with those friends and got to meet an insane amount of people in the Smite industry, part of esports. And uh, I asked, you know, how do I get involved? What do I do? And I just kept being told the same answer, which is just do it. Just get involved. You're getting ready to go to college, get your degree, and just get involved with esports. When I got to college, there was nothing there, so I started it. Wow, so eSports started uh, a year before we started here with Joshua Sh Sides. Shout out Josh, if he's watching this. Uh, and he's currently at Winthrop University. He was only at St. Ambrose for about a year, so it was a very uh, kind of rocky foundation, just because it was so new still. So when we started, we had about 12 players in our program, two teams, which was Overwatch and League of Legends. And now, wow, we, we have evolved uh, <laughs> at a crazy rate, I, I would say. We now have right around 45 players in our program, and we have uh, six different, five different teams. We're starting our sixth in the fall. And uh, it, it's everything that we've done has basically been since I've started here. So all components, uh, including our programming and cat broadcasting, uh, defining and creating skill sets, traveling to tournaments, everything is sort of encompassed throughout our career here at St. Ambrose, including getting part-time coaches. We now have coaches for every single game that we offer. I have allocated the opportunities. I have been the one uh, I try to lead by example for, for all of my students. So it's some, some would say that I, it, people in the program would probably say that I have been the backbone for pushing and, and developing our program from the beginning. But honestly, I just put opportunities in front of people and just hope that they're going to take it to the fullest extent. And, and really, that's what we do here at St. Ambrose. It's been a journey. I am currently pursuing my master's degree in organizational leadership, and I'm a big believer in implementing what you're learning in applying it to something so you have that applicable learning and it's no longer just knowledge it's experience right which you, you can draw from much easier so everything that i learned in my master's degree i try to apply in what we're developing here at saint ambrose as an organization and constantly evolving um and and that's been part of what has set aside those opportunities can i say everything and underline it <laughs> well really i i it's evolved right because when i started i was the head coach 
And then as my first year as a director, we really didn't have other coaches that were official quite yet, but we had all these teams. So year to year, it changes. And, and I would say what really defines a director or a head coach is one, how well they can schedule, two, how well they can delegate, and three, how adaptable they are. And that's exactly what we do. We try to make sure the schedules are transparent. We try to make sure that we're adapting to the situation and we try to make sure that we're working with our students. So uh, it, it changes year to year. But as of right now, I would say my, my role and responsibility and, and my primary focus is student development, ensuring that students get jobs post-graduation, working with them one-on-one -on -one through whatever's going on in their life, whether it be personal uh, in their own personal life or school. I, I really try to embody the statement, be who you needed when you were younger. And when I was going through esports, I really didn't have anyone like that. Man, it, it's so funny you ask that because I was actually talking with a recruit earlier about it. And I'm very transparent about what we look for in our program. Number one, GPA. GPA hands down is the first thing that we look at when we look at any student because it tells me how serious you take opportunities, right? You're told at a very early age, you do well in school, you try hard in school, then you're going to get opportunities in college. And I embodied that in high school. I mean, I was a 21st century scholar. My family could not pay for me to go to school. I was a financial minority and I made sure that school came first, even when we had hardships. So uh, coming from someone who's been in really tough situations in life and still made things work out, I think uh, a subpar 2.0 GPA is just, I'm not looking for that person. Um, the second thing that we look for is mentality. That's actually the second thing. Um, ensuring that a student has a good head on their shoulders and at least works through their mental problems. Typically I'll ask a student in the recruitment process, you know, how do you practice? Please, please run me through how you go about practicing. Uh, run me through what you do in, in, a, in, in a lobby where maybe you're negative KD or, or you have a teammate that is acting really toxic. I ask these sort of inquiries, probing, uh, humble inquiry type of questions to get this information out of them um, and ensure that they're coachable. I mean, we've brought players into our program that are masters players and they stagnant. They stay masters because they're not coachable and frankly, they don't want to learn. We also have brought people into the program that are silver and worked their all way all the way up to masters. Um, um, so I think mentality is part of being coachable, right? If you have a very poor mental, you're not going to be coachable. And then the third thing that we look for is rank and experience. Um, notice how I mentioned it third. Yes, it's after the other two. It's something that's important. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I think, honestly, experience is even more important than rank. I will gladly pick up a student who's traveled to LAN events, participated in online events, has a grassroots team that they work with and is constantly putting themselves in front of opportunities over a kid that's masters. I mean, if your master's cool, then you've learned the rank system, you've done well in the rank system. I'd love to chat with you if you have a good GPA and a good mentality, but I mean, that that's 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 a rank, right? And ranked, if, if we've learned anything, is very, very different than team play. Listen, I just gave you the keys to the kingdom in the last answer. You have to have a good GPA. You have to start thinking about how you want to practice now. Think about your regimen. Think about what you're putting into practice. Think about active play versus passive play, meaning am I actively working on a concept or a skill to better right now, or am I just gaming with my buddies, right? And, and both are important, but when you're sitting down to practice, you have to practice with an objective in mind so you can benchmark your goals. So. I guess that would be my number one thing uh, of, of uh, recommendations to a student looking to get scholarships. Get your name out there, get on a platform, make sure your socials are clean because we're also going to look at your social media and, and see what you're doing on there. And then work on defining who you want to be as an esports professional. I will also say this, please, please. Don't just try to get scholarships to play. Schools are offering scholarships for casters, videographers, content creators now. Start honing that skill set and you are going to be a, a, a high bar above the rest of the people looking for scholarships because now you have something more to bring to the table rather than I play game well. Even if you have interest, you don't even have to have a, a massively huge portfolio to get a scholarship for it. If you're a streamer, you love streaming and you're like, hey, you know, production could be a good outlet for me to start getting involved. Do it. 
Start looking for schools that need producers, that need people to run the streams. Or if you're looking to get involved with tournament organization or business in esports, say that up front. Don't just say, yeah, I play the game really well. I'm looking to get a scholarship for being a good player. We are no longer just recruiting good players anymore. We are recruiting skill because it's skill that gets the jobs in the industry as it currently is. Oh, man. There's so many good moments, man. Uh, I, I gotta say, my my one of my fondest memories was toing uh, and and working with the Fortnite community last year with uh, Michael Brooks. I was uh, helping him with the lobby creation, and the Fortnite community, for one reason or another, just really loves Michael Brooks. It just uh, puts him on a pedestal. So watching that interaction go down was very funny. It, it was the highlight of every week for me. Um, I would also say I'm a huge advocate of the Smash and fighting games community. So I was big behind the push in implementing uh, Smash Brothers and Nace. And so watching that come to fruition has been pretty special for me. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of colleges in the space that are focused on developing students to become good players and and kind of sending them out into the, the industry. We're very focused on skill sets. Our number one primary directive, our, our mission statement, if you will, is ensuring that our players develop themselves as young esports professionals so that they can get opportunities post-graduation. That is number one what we're looking for. If you're coming into college and say you're even looking at esports as just something on the side that you'd love to be involved with, I still want to ensure whatever your main career is, whether it is you want to be a chef or an engineer. In, in today's market, too many people that graduate college that do not get jobs post-graduation, that's our number one focus is ensuring that you get those jobs post-graduation. Very grassroots oriented. Our program is very grassroots oriented. And I don't just recruit or talk to people about St. Ambrose. I try to get people recruited into collegiate esports. I try to recruit for the industry because I never had anyone for me uh, like that when I was younger. And you know, like I said earlier, try to be who you needed when you were younger.